You're listening to the weekly Parsha podcast, recorded with Hashem's never-ending assistance in Ramah B'Shem and Shizrael 5776-2016. This week, in Chutzlaretz, you'll be reading Parsha's Bahar. And the Torah tells us in this week's Parsha a number of times, it speaks of a person who's become poor. Ki when your brother is going to become poor. So the Torah instructs us, what do we do in that situation? How do we help out our brothers the people of Israel, the Jewish people, who have become poor. Pasuk says it, chapter 25, verse 25, it speaks about Ki Yomu Chachicha, when your brother becomes poor. It speaks to such a person in chapter 25, verse 35, Yomu Chachicha, When your brother will become poor, he'll stick out his hand toward you. You're to strengthen him. Verse also speaks about this person, again, using the same lush and the same language, Ki Yomu Chachicha, Imach, in verse 39 as well. And I'd like to share with you a thought from the Medrash, which goes into explaining the concept behind tzedakah, the concept behind charity. But interestingly, in speaking about it, it doesn't first start, start off with somebody who's poor because he has no money. But actually it speaks about somebody who's poor in a spiritual sense, that he doesn't have Torah, he doesn't have those spiritual teachings, he hasn't developed himself spiritually, he hasn't learned the Torah as much as he would like. And nevertheless, just like a poor person who doesn't have money will come along to a rich person and say, please share your wealth with me. Please help me out. I can't do it myself. So too you can have somebody who's a person who is spiritually poor. He hasn't studied the Torah as much as he would like. And he comes to someone else who indeed has studied the Torah and who does have those teachings, who has learned those things. And he says to him, please will you share with me? And the Medrash tells us that there are two different people, two different types of people who respond to the person who's poor both when it comes to Torah and when it comes to money. And there are two different approaches, two different responses. And I'd like to read this to you inside. The measure tells us this is in Parsha Lamed Dalit 34, section number 4, that if someone is poor, the measure says that we find a verse in Mishle, in Proverbs chapter 29, verse 13, and another verse in chapter 22, verse 2, that speaks about two different people. Rush the The first one is when you have a poor person who's who's meaning uh, an ishtachim, and the ish, Eitzesiv explains well, who is this ishtachim, who is this person? He's a person who's a benoni. He's a middle type of person. He's not wildly wealthy, but he's not poor. He's someone who works hard for a living. He has what he needs. A poor person meets him. That's the first verse. What does that interaction look like? We're going to see soon. The second verse that the, the Medrash quotes is Asher v'Rosh Nifgashu Oisekul Hashem. You have a poor person who meets a rich person. The rich person has a different way of approaching the poor person. As per this medrash, we're speaking obviously about a certain type of rich person. But this rich person, when he meets the poor person, a certain interaction occurs. And the verse tells us, that God has made all of them. What does it mean? We're going to see what it means that God has made all of them. Now the medrash continues and says, that we have two different types of poor people, like we said. One is somebody who is poor monetarily, and another is somebody who is poor when it comes to spiritual matters. Rush, zehu rush bateir, the first thing that the Medrash says is that a poor person that we're speaking about here is someone who is lacking words of Torah. He doesn't know as much Torah. He doesn't have those spiritual teachings under his belt yet. V'ish t'chachem, who is this person who is the benayni, who is the middle type of person, who isn't wildly wealthy, but also isn't poor, this is somebody who has learned one order tra- of tractates, one order of the Mishnayis, or two. Ahmed Rashim Ish Chachim. Now, when the poor person comes to this medium type person, Amrle Hashneni Perakacha, and he says to him, Please teach me a chapter. Vishno, he responds and he says, I'll gladly teach you. Meir Eni Shnei Hashem, the verse tells us that God lights up the eyes of them both. That's the end of the verse in Proverbs. And so, he has acquired this world and the next world. We spoke about in the other verse in Proverbs, a rich person and a poor person who meet. Someone who is spiritually wealthy, he's learned a lot of Torah, he's studied many spiritual teachings. And you have someone who's not as wealthy, he's poor. This person who is spiritually bereft, asks somebody who's spiritually wealthy. He says, and please teach me a chapter. Teach me. Give me some of your teachings. He says, no. I'm, I'm not going to teach you. 
Why should I sit and teach you, whether it's at the end of Shas, at the end of the Mishnah, at the end of the tractates, the order of the Talmud, or at the beginning of the Talmud? Why do I need to teach it to you? Kre usnei im dechavasach. Go with those who are like you. I, I'm too advanced for you. I'm, I'm beyond you, spiritually. So you need to go and study with those who are on your level. So the verse ends off and says, Eisechul Hashem. God made them all. What does that mean, God made them all? Misha'asil zechacham. The one who made, meaning God, who made this person to be wise, to, to be smart, can easily take away his wisdom, take away his knowledge. And God who made this person not as spiritually aware, not as spiritually great, not as wise, God can easily make this person to be wise, to be smart. How easily the tables can be turned. And it's very interesting because we're going to see a similar thing, a similar idea when it comes to wealth that it's easy for the tables to return. It looks like this person is wealthy, this person is poor. He can easily lose his wealth, and Hashem can easily make someone who's poor to be wealthy. It's easy to see how the tables can turn when it comes to money. It's very interesting that the Medjur says that the tables can also easily turn when it comes to wisdom, when it comes to knowledge, when it comes to a person's IQ even. Another explanation. We speak about a poor person we're speaking about someone who's literally poor, he doesn't have that material wealth. We have a person who's in the middle of the road. This is somebody who works for a living, he covers his expenses, he's not wildly wealthy, but he's taken care of, he's taken care of himself. Now this poor person approaches this middle type person, he says to him, please give to me, fulfill the commandment of helping out those who are in need. This middle of the road person indeed gives the poor person some tzedakah, some charity. Mary and Yishneim Hashem. God lights up the eyes of both of them. This poor person now has the means to be able to take care of his livelihood, his physical livelihood in this world. And the, the middle of the road person has now acquired for himself not only something in this world, helping out someone else in need, having the satisfaction perhaps of that, but he's also acquired for himself a place in the world to come. He's acquired for himself a spiritual nechas, a spiritual acquisition that stands for him forever. Now we come to the other verse in Proverbs, which speaks about the rich one and the poor one. Who is this rich person the verse speaks about? It's someone who is rich, has tons and tons of material wealth. Virash Zerash bin the the person who's poor that we're speaking about is someone who doesn't have so many so so much wealth. Amin Rashima Asher. Now the poor person comes to the wealthy person. Amr Laitani Mitzvah. He says to him, Please give to me. Fulfill the commandment of giving charity. The rich person says, I'm not gonna give you. I'm not gonna give you. What I have is mine, what you have is yours. It's your problem, it's not my problem to take care of you. Oisakulam Hashem. God makes them all. Misha Asa Zaani. Hashem, who made this person poor, can easily make him rich. And Hashem, God, who made him rich, who made him wealthy, can easily take away his wealth, cause him to be poor. It's very interesting. The, the language, the, the approach of this rich person, what does he say to the poor person? I can see you you're, you look so poor, right? But I see that you're, you're chewing, you're swallowing, you're eating. And I see your legs are quite fat. I see your stomach. I see you're a real balbusser. You've got some solid meat on you. You're a strong guy. Why do I have to work for you? Work for yourself. So not only does he not give tzedakah, he doesn't give charity to the poor person. He insults him. He puts him down. He puts him. In, he thinks he's putting him in his place, but he's not. He's just putting him down. God says to this rich person, Not only didn't you give anything of yours, not even a drop, What I have given him, the things that he does have, the the strength that he has, the physical ability that he has, you are looking at it in a negative light. Which literally means, it's a verse in Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 13 in Kahelis. It literally means that you will have a son and there will be nothing left. But the Medrash Darshan says, That from all that he has, what's going to be the result? What's going to be the spiritual legacy of this rich person? 
he, all he will have is a mum. We're darshaning the word meuma. All you have left is nothing. All you have left is muma. Muma means a blemish. All that you have is this blemish of this negative way of speaking, this negative approach to life. The fichach and the medrash finishes off. Therefore, Moshe Mazir Yisrael v'chiyamu chachicha. Moses gives an exhortation to the Jewish people, to the people of Israel, that they shouldn't behave in this way. That a person, when they see a poor person, should help the person out. They should give the charity. They shouldn't go with their natural way of being, with their negative approach, with their constricted thinking, and their inability to share and give to others what they need. Rather, they should go and they should share, recognize that someone who has less, it's no fault of his own per se, it's something that we need to help him, we need to lift him out, we need to get him a job perhaps, it's the highest form of tzedakah, highest form of charity. But in any event, we need to be positive, we need to help people out, we need to not look at things in a negative light and hoard the money only for ourselves. Now there are two points I want to bring out of this medrash, and there's a third point which I'd like to bring out from a different medrash, another short piece a little bit later on in the medrash. The first two points I'd like to bring out are as follows. Number one, that we see that when it comes to a, a person who's rich, for some reason, the the verse in Proverbs is using the rich person as the picture or as the dogma, the example of somebody who he has so much, he's not willing to share, not willing to give it to anybody who's less than them, both when it comes to spiritual matters and when it comes to financial matters. I see that I have so much. I'm not. You you deal with your own kind. You worry about it yourself. I'm not going to take care of you. As opposed to the benoni, the middle type of person, the the middle of the road person who has he has something. Doesn't have a lot. He's not like overly wealthy. He has what he needs, and he's willing to share that with someone who's not as spiritually wealthy, who's not as financially wealthy. What is the difference between these two people? Why is the benoni able to share, so to speak? as opposed to the usher who's not able to share. And I think that what the Medrash is teaching us here, the idea that the Medrash is bringing across, is that a person who's rich, and in this context, we're speaking about a certain type of rich person, who doesn't have the ability to share. Why? It's because for him, everything came to him easily. He has wealth, he has money, he has all his needs taken care of. He sees someone else who's poor, and he says, why should I give up of my things? This is mine. Why should I give it to you? It's the Midas Daim. The people of Sodom, of Sodom, their attitude was that whatever we have is ours. God gave it to me. Why should I give it to you? If he wanted to give it to you, he should have given it to you. They don't see themselves. The people of Sodom don't see themselves, and this rich person doesn't see himself as a shliach of Hashem, as an agent. He just sees himself as whatever I have is mine. What's mine is mine. What's yours is yours. The Benoni, the middle type of person, doesn't live in a world of constriction, doesn't see that it's a contradiction. He senses, he realizes that what Hashem has given to him is meant to be shared. Not only that, but as the verse tells us, Meir Hashem. God lights up the eyes of both of them. When He shares it with the other person, not only does He get what He has, not only does He understand the Torah that He's learned, not only does He have the money that He's, that he's earned, uh, it seems He's giving it away. No, it doesn't work that way. In spiritual terms, when I share with somebody else, I get what I have even stronger. Meaning, for certain, we can see it when it comes to wisdom, when it comes to understanding, when it comes to spiritual concepts. If I'm going to share a spiritual concept with you, I'm going to have a certain level of clarity because I have to explain it clearly so that you understand it. So I get it. Not only do I have it, I get it even stronger. It's something that, as the measure says, it stands for me both in this world and in the next world. It's something that I have for all eternity. Because by giving it to you, when I share something, when I give it away, that's how I'm able to keep it. That's how it strengthens it in me. But this brings us to the second point of the Medrash, which is that we see that it's speaking about spiritual matters, it's speaking about Torah, it's speaking about wisdom, somebody sharing his wisdom with someone who's not as lucky as him, who's not as wise as him, as opposed to a person who's extremely wise. And is not willing to share that wisdom. Go learn with your type. He's constricted. He's small. Even though he thinks that he's big, he's small. The Medrash places that right next to the concept of someone who's literally poor and someone who's literally rich and someone who's literally in the middle path when it comes to his parnasa, when it comes to his livelihood. And what is the reason why it's placing these two things together? They seem to, one is a physical matter, has to do with my, my monetary status, has to do with how much money I have. One is a spiritual thing, how much wisdom I have. They don't seem to be connected. And I think that the Medrash is putting them together because the Medrash is teaching us that they are connected. There is no difference 
on, at the core of it. There's no difference between physical and spiritual. They're just two manifestations of the same spiritual concept at the root. And that spiritual concept is, as we said, when I have something, it seems like if, I, if I'm going to share it with somebody else, I lose it. But just like it's very clear, on a, in a spiritual sense, when I share it, I don't lose it. It strengthens it for me. The Medjish is teaching me that in the physical sense as well, because the physical, because the monetary, the financial, is really a manifestation of something spiritual. When I give away my money, when I share my money, I'm not really giving it away. It seems that way at first. But the truth is that Mer Eini Shneim Hashem, just like when it comes to wisdom, Hashem gives an extra level of understanding because I'm sharing it with somebody else. When it comes to money as well, to the financial matters, when I share, when I give it away, when I give charity, when I share with others the money that I have, so there is something that just like it strengthens in me when I share an idea, it strengthens in me something when it comes to my money. And the idea is that money itself is an expression of the fact that Hashem is giving me my needs. That's what money represents. It's just a, a, a representation. Money just represents that I have done something for someone else that has value. They've given me that money to represent that. Now I can take that money and express to someone else that they are giving me something that has value. When I can share that with somebody else, it shows that I'm not constricted in my thinking. That, you know, it's easy to believe, it's easy to think that when I give this money away, I lose the money. When I, when I share this money with somebody else, I give it to someone who's poor. Come on, man, get a job. Why don't you have a job? Look, you're an able-bodied person. Why don't you work for yourself? Right? So but that's constricted thinking. That approach, that, that way of thinking is not useful. It doesn't help him and it doesn't help me. But when I'm open, when I have an expansive consciousness, when my approach to life is here, what I have, Hashem sometimes gives me something for somebody else. When I'm willing to share it with somebody else, it brings more to me. It makes me more open to receive when I'm willing to share with others. So it's a spiritual principle that's at play here as well, that when I share my wealth, it brings more to me. Just like when I share my wisdom, it brings more to me. And this brings me to my final point, which I'd like to share with you from another Medrash. But before I do, I just want to share a, a quick story that happened to me just yesterday. Baruch Hashem, right now, I'm making a bar mitzvah. My son, my oldest son, is 13 years old. He's just turned 13 this Shabbos. He's reading from the Torah. And on Sunday, we're having a beautiful party, Mr. Shem, with God's help. Yesterday, we were at the Kotel, we were at the Western Wall, and my son got his first aliyah, the first time that he was called up to the Torah as a bar mitzvah boy, and he read from the Torah, and he led the prayers, he led the davening. After that, we went to the back of the Kotel area. There's a section for families that you could sit, and, you know, you can eat some food, and then we had brought food, we brought bagels with us, and there was a whole, you know, my family has come, my wife's family has come, and a person who was not connected to us all of a sudden, came over, he was eating from our food, he didn't ask, just came over, and I guess this is what he does, this is how he gets his food. Anyway, so in my approach and my feeling toward it, I felt very upset about it. I felt like, hey, who's this guy, why is he joining in my, this is a family affair, this is not something that, you know, he didn't even ask, I mean, if, maybe if he asked, you know, I'll share with him, he didn't even ask. That was my feeling about it, and then looking at it, and looking at the thinking and the feeling, the automatic, the go-to that I went to in this circumstance, in this situation, you know, I see that there's a constriction in that. There's a feeling, you know, wow, I'm really outlaying a tremendous amount of money on a bar mitzvah. There's so many expenses involved. It's like a mini wedding. And so the feeling that I have is like, wow, I, I don't have it. How can I, how can I give to him? And that's a natural feeling. That's an automatic feeling. And the question is, how indeed does a person deal with that? How do I be open-hearted? How do I be like the Isht Chachim? How do I be like that person who's the middle-of-the-road person who recognizes that what I have is from Hashem, that I can be expansive? I don't have to believe that if I give to Him, I'm not going to have anything for myself. <laughs> and in fact, in the end, there were plenty of bagels left, even though He took a bunch for Himself. There were plenty of bagels. After the whole thing is finished, I have a bag upstairs full of bagels. But that's not how I felt in the moment. So what is the approach? How does a person deal with this? It's natural to feel that way. How do I move from the Ish Ashir, that person who looks like he's rich, but really he's constricted, into a person who's an Ish Tachim, who's the middle of the road person, who has that balance? So I'd like to share with you a small piece in the Medrash, which is the third point, which is the idea, which is an approach to work on this idea. Amr Zera, Afil Sichosan Shal Bnei Israel Amazing thing Rabzera says. He says that 
even the simple words of the people of the land of Israel, that itself is, is a teaching. That itself is a Torah. How is this so? If you go to Israel, says Rav Zera, and you hear how the beggars speak, the poor people speak, this is what they say. Zaki bi, oirachi bi, zaki garmach bi. They say, come, they don't just say, I need money. They say, come and get a merit through me. If you give tzedakah, say the poor people of Israel, you will get a merit through me. You will become great through me. Rabbi Chagai Omar, Rabbi Chagai says that the language of the people of Israel, the poor people of Israel, is slightly different. Sachibi, not Zachibi, Sachibi. And the word Sachibi means, look at me, see with some intuitive thoughts, with some Ruach HaKodesh, with some divine inspiration. Istakalbi, Sachibi Mahaveno, Istakalbi Ma'ano. Look what I was, and look what I am now. And the Eitzhasev explains that the poor person is saying, look at me, once I was rich, now I'm poor. Realize that money, you know, life and money is a galgal achazer. It's a, a turning wheel. Sometimes a person is up, sometimes a person is down. Look at me. Don't make the mistakes that I made. If you're rich, share that wealth so that you don't end up poor like me. That's how the the bnei Eretz Yisrael, the poor people of Israel, speak. I was thinking, what is this medrash trying to teach me? What is the concept here? What is the depth? of what it's saying, and what can I take with me from this? And it hit me that in thinking about my story and my attitude and my feelings, and also I, I, I had seen this medrash before that whole story happened. You know, I prepare, I look around at the parsha, I'm preparing for this parsha podcast, I saw this, this medrash already. So what was Hashem trying to tell me? What is the medrash trying to tell me? I think that the idea is that yes, a person has natural feelings, and has the automatic responses. But Hashem also reminds a person, sends him messages, so that he should remember, hey, that's how you think naturally, but this is the way we can be greater. This is the way I can be higher. Hashem sends those messages, specifically, it's speaking about the Sichost on Shabbat Eretz Yisrael, the way that people speak in the land of Israel. And we know that Eretz Yisrael, the land of Israel, is much higher in a certain sense, in a spiritual sense, than all the other lands. And that means, as the Torah tells us, it's the Eretz Hashem Hashem Lekechaba. It's the land that Hashem is always looking at. There's more Hashkach Pratis. There's more of these messages that Hashem is sending. When you come to Israel, you hear the messages more. So it could be that the Medrash is telling us that when you come to Israel, and even you listen to the language of the people, the poor people, there Hashem is speaking through them. They are messengers of Hashem as well. And they say, come, remember what it's all about. Get a merit through me. Become great through me. Sachibi, look intuitively at me. Notice what has happened. How did I get to where I am so that you don't end up where I am? But this is really Hashem speaking through the poor person. And this Medrash, this Dvar Torah, this idea for me is talking to me and saying, remember what is the ideal? Remember to be great, to be large, to not think that I don't have enough. Hashem gives me enough. Hashem gives me my needs. Hashem gives me, it helps me to be able to, to do everything that I need. And that's the ish tchach, and that's the benani person, the middle of the road person. That type of person, the verse tells us that meir ene shneim Hashem, that God lights up the eyes of the person who's the messenger, of the poor person. And Hashem also lights up the eyes of the person who's the middle of the road person, who's able to share and recognize that what he has, that everything that he has, that hard-earned money is not just for him, it's also for others. And when there's a constricted consciousness, when a person thinks that there's not enough, he ends up with nothing. But when there's an expansive consciousness, when a person recognizes that everything is from Hashem and it's meant to be shared, that person ends up with a greater spiritual inheritance, with a greater spiritual awareness, both when it comes to Torah and when it comes to his financial life, to his financial ability. Hashem should bless me and Hashem should bless you that we should be able to recognize this idea, look out for the messengers that are all around us, no matter where we are in the world. Yes, we might hear them more in Israel, but they're there no matter where we are. Hashem should help us to hear those messages. Hashem should help us remind ourselves and others of what the spiritual messages are and how we can be greater financially, spiritually, how our wealth can increase. We can walk along this middle of the road. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful Shabbos. This podcast was made possible through the gracious donations of listeners like you. For more podcasts like this, please visit www.arigoldwag.com 
or search on iTunes Ari Goldwag.